Hello folks, well as promised, like bloody eyebrows, um, what's going to be tonight is the 50 personal watch collection video. We're going to have a look at the Russians, the Japanese, the Secondas and everything else. See you in the view. Right, so here we go. This is the Soviet stuff or the Soviet inspired stuff. As you can see, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, I thought I had one more than that. 17. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, I am missing one somewhere. Ah, oh, this one. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have two over here as well. It's a bit silly, wasn't it? Right, well, what we shall do is we shall go part, you know, we shall see. Right. Here's my um, recent general ski, as you can see. I've put it on this thing because it's the lack of straps. You know, I did try it on a, an Excalibur one, but it was just too spindly. I, know, I, I have got, hopefully, an 18mm Excalibur coming. But that's a brilliant piece that is. Sadly it's a bit faded on the gold, but you know. Uh, Commandersky Cadet. That's um, destined. I've got another one of these in chrome coming. And those are going to be for my nephews. There's my one of my favourites. It's a brilliant watch this is. Like, as you can see, it's got like the, the bomber sort of look on it, like you know, artificial horizon. You know, it looks great on that um, NATO as well. Good old honest Boktok. I you know, 2209. It is what it is. It's, it's just a basic, like, you know, it's using the same movements as everything, but it is an absolutely brilliant piece, that is. Nineteen fifties Pobeda. Right. Just on the ornate, tooled leather strap. This is the one I got this week. It's beautiful time, it really is, like, you know, general ski, Air Force, I, you know, absolutely brilliant, I, you know. Uh, what have we got next? Oh, yes. Petrol Blue, uh, what's it, Assault Forces, I believe that would be, Paratrooper, I, you know, again, it's on a NATO, I, you know, it's very, very nice. I like that. I I did have two paratroopers, but like you know, one of the um, paratroopers, like uh, the gold had gone a bit funny. But I, I reshelled this one as well because like uh, the case it was in was a bit knackered. Uh, and that, that one's quite good. Oh my God, here's, here's that lovely AU10 slaver. Beautiful piece that is, oh, you know, that's one of my favourites. And it's come up so much with a good clean. Took a wine like, earlier on and it's keeping, you know, yeah, 57, yeah, that's brilliant. So, still haven't got the date wheels ungunned, but they are, you know, it's what it is, like, you know, it's a very old, old watch. Um, got that one, um, it's a distressed hide leather strap. Here's an unusual one, it's a 2209, um, supposed to be like um, a Bostock, right? Um, it's got a very nice bezel there, it's just like, like um, silver plated, by the looks of it. Uh, it does the job. Forty-five years victory. I believe is a general ski. 
and the TIN, which is uh, titanium nickel uh, nitride um, plating. Gives it like a brass, shiny brass effect that doesn't corrode, but it does wear off quite easily. Right, as you can see, it's the first of these I've got that very strange bezel, which I've not seen on many. This is actually an Admiral Ski. Absolutely brilliant piece. This is the one with the pillow, um, light kind of shape, and all the square, all the rounded square. This one I also had to the um, lug at the bottom there was um, had something broken on, so I had to carefully chip it out using a Dremel. Uh, that's a beautiful piece of watch that is. This is the last of the leather ones. Another general ski. This time a tank commander one. So, you know, that's, um, it's very hard to get the beauty of these gold dials. But that is like Brian, no, that is. It's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, in the case, everything is just spot on. Beautiful thing. And on a, a NATO dark brown one. So, I'm very pleased with that one. I like wearing that one. So there's the leather ones. Alright, so we'll move on to the. It's another one of my firm favourites. Admiral Ski. Could be Vlad Vladivostok Admiral Ski. I don't know, but as you can see, I've got it on a very nice um, stainless steel bracelet. It looks absolutely a business. And you know, it's got the two o'clock um, crown. And you know, this one keeps absolutely spotless time as well. Tank Commander, very much like the, uh, as you can see, the tank logo it is about the same, I, you know, but um, this, this is what you call the common garden tank commander, and as you can see it's a nice case, nice bezel. You know, the only problem with this one is that if you wind it too far, the spring slips. So, but if you like, uh, I, I've worked out exactly how many you have to wind it up so you can get about a day and a half's worth of wind. So, all I have to do is just like every day give it like 14 or 15 winds and it'll just keep going, as, you know, forever. Uh, got it on the uh, stainless steel bracelet, nice one. Well, I don't even know where I got that stainless steel bracelet from, but it, it does seem to work. Uh, who's next? Oh yeah, this is the recent one that I had up on the desk shelf for a while. This is that 2234 I bought for £2. And um, oh, look at that, 1801. It's keeping very good time. Everything that you see there, the numbers and the indices are loomed. Um, Da, 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 da. Ready? Look at that. That is lovely, that, isn't it? So, it doesn't last very long, but then again, like this is a 1970s watch, so I'm not expecting it to last very long. I've got it on that um, Pulsar bracelet that the Amphibia was on. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's looking brilliant, that is, and it's very nice to wear and it keeps good time. Uh, it's got a good wind on it. Right. So, that's one of my successes. This one is still being a watch sit. Like, um, it's running too fast. Like, I set the time at uh, 5 o'clock. It's now 18.02. And as you can see, it's showing there nearly um, 7 o'clock. So, it's gained like half an hour quite quickly. So uh, this one is probably going to be sent off to be serviced. It's a shame. The bracelet's coming off of this as well, because that's going on to my Pole Jot Stadium. But this is the KGB one. And I just wonder if this is like, was it bad luck, like, you know? <laughs> but everything else works in a fine way, like, you know? This was a D-dial, a redial. Right? I don't know what it was. It was working fine. It was just running a little bit fast. So I thought, okay, what I'll do is I'll just tweak the touch of the um, regulator arm from like you know the advanced to the middle bit and I mean we're talking about not even a millimetre 
and it just went crazy fast. So I don't know what's going on there. Right. I suspect it's oil on the mainspring, but I've tried daubing it off and like giving it a clean, but it's still running too fast. And last but not least, here's me amphibia. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Right. That there is amazing, that watch. If you want a decent Russian watch, Vostok Amphibia, any of them are pretty good. Right, that thing has been absolutely brilliant. You know, I'm very pleased with that. That was my first proper decent Vostok, and I would say that it has not disappointed. And now I've got it on a nice, like, kind of president sort of um, steel bracelet. It really is, you know, it's the business. Uh, and the last one that's not going to be shown right, until it's finished properly, right, I am working still hard on this one here. And it's the TV, look, I mean, it's looking clean. And there's the new movement. Um, and the other movement I bought arrived the other day. Brand new, never been used. Like, you know, it's still got like, you know, all this like um, slab of gubbins and that. So obviously somebody in the, in the collapse of the Soviet or whatever, somebody bought just a hell of a lot of um, like slab of stuff. So that's going to go into something else, unless I can make it fit into that pole job, which would be brilliant. But, you know, I don't think it will. So there you go. And like, that's all my Russian stuff. On to the next. So what we're going to look at now are the Japanese uh, I've got in my collection and there's that Loris that I bought for in a bundle and cleaned it up inside, put a new strap on it, I'm quite pleased with that. It is basically a rebadged Seiko, it's a Seiko Quartz, it's got exactly the same Seiko Quartz inside as standard Seiko quartz so you, you won't get any surprises with that and the thing is is that it's, it's reliable right you know so it's day date this one was a pain in the bum I ain't I'm not gonna like unless I find a scrap one going I am not going to be changing that glass anytime soon because it's just such a hard job to find but I've now glued that errant, uh, what's it, movement holding ring inside for using some flexible glue. It's like, it's kind of like denture glue, but it's supposed to be a bit stronger. If that doesn't hold it, then I'm going to use uh, very finely light strips of, uh, what's it, VHB tape, like 3M, like, you know, and that, that means it'll never come off. So I don't really want to do that. But, you know, I do like, it's got a lovely, like, um, stainless steel bracelet. It's a very nice watch actually, right, I'm just going to put on. Uh, here she goes. Uh, is chicken is still going? Yeah, because it stopped earlier, like, when I wound it up, and that was a bit weird. But, now you can actually heal the rotor like you know like that pee in, pee in a, um, an empty vessel sort of sound uh, that's my first automatic Seiko that is as well this one works but it's temperamental because this one's a bit loose inside uh, I have no idea what's causing it but it's such an iconic thing right and that is a really really nice looking Orient, this Orient um, Tri-Star Crystal, very early 70s. Here's that one pound Seiko, 709-3100. Works extremely well, right at, even on a Seiko like um, bracelet as well. That's a very nice piece that is. I, that is my, that, and, I mean, I do like my two Seikos. I can see why these Seiko 5s are sort of very popular. I mean, for a pound, what, what more do you want? Jam on it? And here's like, you know, 
1975 automatic day date citizen. I got this because I like fluorescent orange. You know, this does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a bit small for my wrist, as far as I'm concerned. I thought at first it was a lady's, but it's not. It's 1975. You know, watches were that small. So there's my Japanese um, side of it all. Now we're on to the next. Oh, that is too quiet. Now this is the Oscar Emil Booster. Now, this was a very, very expensive watch when it was new, and it's, it's also very, very unusual. But it's, it's not saying it's got Myota's um, best quality uh, quartz chronograph. It's a high, high chronograph, which means that the big second hand does the chronograph, and the little second hand down there does the normal like um, seconds right. and um, it's an incredibly watch it's bloody it's the heaviest watch I've got I you know it really does it weigh, it weighs a lot you really feel like it I still haven't done the crystal of it because I still have not confident in doing it it's working it does what it says on the tin so on the back of that I thought, well, I'll try a more modern Oscar Emil. So that's Oscar Emil Houston. Oscar Emil Series 3000. This has got Moyota's crappiest um, quartz mo movement in it. And the only saving grace is that that blue dial is absolutely gorgeous. And it's got very good loom. And the titanium and gold um, bracelet is very pleasant. So, you know, it's a bling watch. This is a, a, a functional Oscar Emil, but this is it's more for looking smart, you know. So, there's my two Oscar Emils, uh, which is a London company. Uh, um, they, they, they're not, you know, they, they were started up in London, but I think that was when they, they were like interested in making very high quality watches, like you know, and that was when they just realized that they got a little bit of a following, so they just turned out, you know, really nice looking watches, but sadly with crappy quartz bloody movements in. But then again, a Moyota movement is a good movement, whichever way you look at it. It's just that there are levels of good as well, you know. I mean, this chronograph is absolutely lovely. I mean, it's one of my top watches ever. Well, right, what we're going to do now is we're going to carry on with the Secondas. So, this is like a retro one. As you can see, it's on the Royal, um, Royal Artillery uh, NATO. Um, this is the one with the uh, loom dial. I love that one. I kept that for that particular reason. And. This is that recently, the one I showcased it, where I fixed it up, sorted it out. That uh, divers, Seconda divers. I still haven't got the um, Cyclops for it to turn up, so I'm going to glue a Cyclops onto it. And um, I'm waiting for a nice gold tone, like a president sort of bracelet. Uh, if you compare it with. Uh, And that's the tiger's eye. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. That is. You can see that would that, that bracelet would look absolutely spot on. You know, I should really wear this more as well, but I don't. There's that lovely coffee gold day date one. It's a bit. Bit rough. He's missing his keeper there. But I like it because you know it's it's just an unusual colour. It's like coffee gold. It's like a gold, not rose gold, but coffee. D 
this I bought for a pittance. This is a Conda Expedition Divers. It's made of completely of plastic the case. And this one the Velcro. As you can see, it's got like its own ex expose. There you go. So when you're wearing this, you can expose yourself to people. It's fixed bezel. It does, you know, it does what it does. Like you know, it is basically a disposable outdoor watch. Now I'm still waiting for the second hand to turn up for this from China, but I'm going to another go at getting this one working because this is like absolutely huge seconda this is it's very nice and this is another one with that beautiful loom watch watch this you'll love this look at that that is loom i'll keep that one till last Very nice condo and a very nice, uh, what I call a multi grain band instead of a grains of rice because it's got like a dip in the middle look, link. You know? I like that one as well. Remember, some of these are like well, still on um, British summertime, so some of them will be an hour slow. And then we got this one here. This is the Anna Digital, uh, Analog Digital, uh, it's got stopwatch alarm, uh, you know, multi-grain, um, straight, straight um, cover links. It's, um, it's a very nice, I, I got this for a stupid price. This one's quite good for loom as well. So I like that with Seconda, their looms aren't that bad. Oh yes, and of course it's got light on the dial as well. And this is the one that got me into it all in the first place when I found this. That is um, a Seconda Safari, very early quartz one. Um, again, this one's missing the second hand. I've kept it on this strap. I don't care because I like it. And again, this one surprised me when I found out. Not only has it got date on it, but it's also got a very good loot. If you give it a second. And that is a really good loot. I mean, that, that isn't going anywhere, is it? So. Now the whole point with um, the Secondas, uh, you know, is that basically um, it would have been something like this, but a winder. When I was um, a kid, I, my mum kept buying me Timexes, and um, let's let's just be honest, like children's Timexes back in the seventies were rubbish. They really were. They were fragile. The glasses fell out. If you wound it too energetically, like you know, like the stem would break, and or like you know, or just fall out. Um, the lugs, like, were just very. They were all, like they were cast out of cheese. You know, slightest knock, slightest problem, bang, it's dead. And it was there was no repair in it. I, you know, so my mum, like, you know, getting really fed up that every time she bought me one for my birthday or for Christmas, right, she went and bought me a Seconda instead. And, um, it lasted, it lasted a year, and then it lasted a second year. Why, like, you know, and, like, you know, and she says, well, that's it, like, you know, from now on, you're, you're having Secondas, like, you know. And then in the uh, late 70s, early 80s or something, like Madness, one of my favourite ska groups, like, you know, from that era, like, started doing adverts. And of course, that was it. Like, you know, if Madness could be doing, like, Seconda adverts, and uh, Ronnie Barker, it was another famous bloke, like, it was doing Seconda adverts, quite funny ones. Uh, you know, I... I <laughs> uh, it, it really is, um, you know, 
watches. Condors are like kind of the Ford Escorts of British watch watches. They started off being Soviet watches, rebranded. I, um, I haven't got my um, Soviet uh, Secondas out this, this this particular one because I wanted to show 50 watches. So, but it was something like that, you know, on a on a on a canvas strap sort of thing, you know. And I mean, that would have been what I would have worn in the 70s, right, you know. And in fact, I will say this: that when I came out of uh, my coma, like. Uh, 75, 76, like, um, my watch was still working, like, you know, if you left your Timex for like more than a day without winding it up, it stopped working, it was just an absolute rubbish thing for kids, you know, and it was like, my mum just was like, put on here, and it was the, um, what it was, was it was the Timex uh, digital watch that I like, kind of sealed it for her, right, um, because, it was the very first digital watch of its kind, like from Timex. It was the red, it was the red glass one, and everything else. And the thing, you know, all you had to do was cough wrong, and it would stop working. You know, if you ate like your peas too quickly at dinner time, it stopped working for any sort of excuse. It stopped working, and in the end, like Timex said that they were no longer going to service it for her, and they gave her a voucher for any sort of like mid-range sort of um, winder. So she went. We went and picked one out, and it, like you know, the bloke was saying, "Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be wonderful stuff like that." And it wasn't because within a week of me having it, and I, I didn't even take it out because I was that scared of doing something to it. All right, it just stopped working. So my mum said, "Right, I want my money back." All right, and she'd paid like the equivalent of the price of like you know a reasonably um, quality car for that bloody watch. I mean, we're talking several hundred pounds. You know, in the 70s, that was a lot of money. I and um, she was ripped off, and she said she wanted her money back. And Timex did. I think they even they realised that 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 their first digital watch was absolutely rubbish. So you know, there you go. This is why I picked Seconda. It is the brand that I found great, like you know, reliability from, and I've always always tried to have a Seconda. Right. right, on to the next one. Yeah. There's me, like, you know, I did forget to add these. Right. I'll be quick, I'll be brief on that because we are running out of time. Right, this is a um, Seconda chronograph, like, and I put it into a Dick and the Grant um, strap because it was, they, they used the same movement, like, you know. I mean, this will, like, when I get another spare one, this will go back into its normal one. But, you know, that's a very nice strap, actually, like. All right. My Seconda World Time. Crap. It's clever, wasn't it? Arrgh, stupid bloody thing. Oh, wait, sorry about that. My Seconda World Time. Mm. That is a full chronograph as well. It's a very nice piece actually. I've got that on a black canvas NATO. And this was my first recent Seconda um, chronograph. Um, as you can see, the bottom dial should be like, spinning around. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, bing! Uh, I love this. This is this is a very nice piece actually. So that finishes the seconds. I'm sorry about the mishap. Okay, we're going to move further east and have a look at the. Oh, God. Hold on a second. Good job these are shop proof, isn't it? We are going to have a look at uh, the Asian side of things. Right. East here, as you can see, my Submariner Homage, it's called a Military Royale. That is a brilliant watch, I'm really pleased with that. All right. I did change it from its brown um, strap to a black one I bought from the same company. 
and I think that is just absolutely you know, and it's so willing and it is just keeps brilliant time when you put it on your wrist and give it a little bit of a wind bosh it stays going until you take it off like you know what more do you want that costs 13 pound oh you know this one here as you can see is the the brightling i think is a b b03 or b01 now uh navi timer homage it's actually got a fully functioning um it's very hard to see because of that anti-reflection glare but if you look the actual slide roll works okay now instead of a chronograph it's only really got it's got day date and 24 hour but it's actually got the same markings and everything and like as the brightling now this has been a brilliant watch and this one's got the display back on it as well. So these two are automatics and I quite like my old phone. Then we have on a NATO leather, Flyger, um, what's it, homage. And where's my thingy? Just give it a blast. Very nice watch. That really is a nice watch, actually. I will say that. Uh, and look at it, it's got quite a glow on it as well. Uh, rose gold LCD. I love this. I, don't, I, don't, I wear it on occasion. I don't wear it often, but you know, I like watches with metal bracelets and I love rose gold. And that is just brilliant you know it does what it says on the tin it's got two times two alarms no five alarms i beg his pardon it's got quite a lot of functions on it you know i mean it's, it really is a very very good watch so you know i'm glad i got that i mean this costs a pittance a few pounds okay the case top is made of plastic Oh, mate, you know, that's the only thing. So whether or not that will last over the years, I don't know, because I think it is probably painted. Now, this one here, what I kept primarily, it's a fake, um, what do you call it? Uh, fake chronograph, sorry, I do beg your pardon. A fake chronograph fixed bezel you know it, it doesn't do anything other than I do like the bracelet you know, it's got a very very nice bracelet like <laughs> and it does look manly you know? it's, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not you know oh it's got um what you call it a domed glass it's clean functional does what it says in the tin. Uh, you know, it doesn't do anything else other than tell the time, and yeah, that's it. No date on it either. Uh, you know, I mean, when you want something you just don't really care about, just stick it on your wrist. Oh, here comes the. Um, I've got this uh, late, late, late -ish last year, end of summer. I think it was. This one's got a faceted glass. I just wanted one, you know, just for the sake of it. It's a day date. It keeps beautiful time. It's got a beautiful rose gold um, finish to it. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not super light, you know, quality or anything. I mean, it's not a Rolex Oyster or something. But you know, I got that for this reason. It's because of this faceted glass. I just love it. I mean, it, it catches the light beautifully. It's very hard to get there you go. Can you see? Yeah, it's like lots of like little facets to it. Uh, the last in the line of the Chinese sort of everything else sort of thing is this old thing, which I put onto a rose gold Ingersoll bracelet. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. 
very very expensive bracelet very very heavy duty I mean this isn't quite as heavy as the Oscar Emile and it looks like a million dollars more than the Oscar Emile but it's got a very very nice chronograph there she goes if you look at the bottom there's like a speedo I don't know if you can see that or not, if it's going to focus. And stop, bosh, and it resets itself. Uh, there's a very, very, on your wrist, that looks absolutely brilliant. It has a bugger to put this, the bracelet on as well, so it's got these kind of fixed ends. Click, it went on there, and um, it took some time. Now this one here, I'll say, has got just as good a loom as a... Um, as you can see. Very bright. It stays lit for quite a while. I'm quite pleased with that. That cost, um, that was in the Black Friday sale, like, you uh, know, 16 quid or something, or 15, 13, I, I can't remember how much you could say, it was a nice voucher with it. And I just had to have that, that blue and rose gold just works. And that's the new colour you oh look at that, it's still glowing. So, that's my kind of um, Chinese um, department. So we're on the home straight, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at my Eagle Moss, uh, Eagle Moss uh, magazine. They started selling watches for a tenner, uh, nine ninety nine a month, and they were selling um, like um, a magazine with a free watch, I, you know, with it. And like this magazine would have featured this actual watch in its role as a flyger, um, original uh, Luftwaffe flyger. And um, obviously it came on a different strap and that, like, you know, it's just because I've, I, I like the idea of having this on a, a German type bund um, with a compass. I, I thought that was far, far more practical, you know, I hand riveted this myself. I mean, it is, lov it is lovely to wear, I, you know, I do like wearing this one often. Sadly, Eagle Mosses are not good on loom. But I have been told their um, movements are actually quite good quality Japanese ones. So, you know, I haven't taken the back off, so I cannot say as this point. So, I am actually missing one, but we are, we are coming up to like uh, this one here. Which one is a um, half size um, version of a long jeans HS Navy diver watch, which was uh, developed as a test, as a prototype for the Royal Navy. Um, the original long jeans one, like this would have been all made from, like um, the whole body was made from silver. Like, you know, cause like silver had less chance of corroding than steel. Um, reinforced around a uh, steel inner body and uh, it did have this crown, right? You know, and the idea being was that you could mo you could like um, use the crown, but when you went into the water, you could actually like um, adjust your time if it seemed to stop or something. Right? You know, these were white, these were wound watches. This is a quartz watch. I do like that, right? and. Um, I mean, it's not a perfect copy by any means. I mean, if you look there, the dial, the numbers and the hands are orange. Like in um, on the original Longines um, HS, they would have been glowing furiously because they they used um, like a radium um, orange paint. And um, but this is basically really the watch that started it all off, if you know what I mean, with um, before the Rolex Submariners and that, because the Rolex Submariner was, was again for the Royal Navy, uh, you know, it was, um, it was it was for the British um, Navy, for their divers. Um, so there you go. Yeah, I mean, they've done quite nice, they've got the silver tone about that, right? Uh, and I've put it on, this is this original, um, 
like NATO strap that it came with, like you know, or Zulu strap or whatever you want to call it, like that. They were actually fitted to these, like, um, what's it, three ring or five ring straps. So, this one here is another Royal Navy diver. Um, da -da -da -da. Oh no, it's not. It's actually this is not. This is um, no, it is not. I do beg its pardon. This is, if I remember rightly, this is the um, Portuguese soldier. All right, Portuguese military watch. It's quite nice with the red dot, a lot of red hands and stuff. I don't know why I thought it was that. Um, Oh, I seem to be missing two. Well, I know where my tank commander is, but um, you've seen the Vostok versions. So you don't need to see them, what they're supposed to be. This is the SBS or Royal Navy Diver Watch. Sadly, it hasn't got a working bezel. Like, it just looks like it's got a working bezel. Uh, and, you know, it's very striking military looking watch. I put it onto a proper dive, watch, dive strap as well, as you can see. Right. Uh, it's got about as much um, waterproofness as a um, packet, open packet of cheese and onion crisps. But it looks to business, you know what I mean? Uh, there we are. Oh, yeah. And French aviators. French pilot watch, whatever you want to call it. I only really got it because I like the um, I, I, like, I like the dial on it, and it is functional. The two sub dials are functional. Well, this is the one that was like a, like faulty because it's missing the number one, which you know I could probably get like a sticker and just stick it on myself. I don't really care that much. Oh yes, I am. I'm, I'm missing one of my di I'm actually missing the, um, a diver. Um, I don't know where that's gone. Right. This one is the best one that Eagle Moss produced to date so far. This is a fully functional chronograph. And it's telling the right time as well. That's good because I never said it. Um, as you can see. doesn't get used that much so here he goes it's reset again I do apologize like you know so, there's me eagle mosses and we'll go for the home we'll go for the final selection of the odds and ends and why they mean something here. and we'll go back up top and have a finish off now this one here this is my joint second, my joint oldest working watch. I tried to give it to my uncle at Christmas, but he didn't want it. It's on an Excalibur 9 karat gold, um, rolled gold band. 1947. And it works like a champion. Keeps good time. You get like a day, and a day and a half, two days on a wind. I mean, you know. 47, 1947. You think about that, like, you know, 70, like 73 years old. Like, you know, I mean, that's like, you know, that's the same age as my mum. That was when she was around. When she was born in 46, I mean, you think about it. But it still works. Like, you know, yeah, like, I'll put a bit of a wind on it and we'll see. There she goes. I paid four pounds for this because somebody who owned it didn't know what it was and they said it needed a new battery and it was full of water. It was neither. They didn't know how to wind up an old wind up watch. And that is now a family heirloom. I am so pleased with that and it's lovely. I, I will at some point get my 
gold plating kit out and I'm going to replate the whole lot. So I've got, I'm going to put it, redo the slather as well. It is beautiful. It's got this kind of like the prop, like, you know, like with a bow tie or whatever you want to call it, hourglass and bow tie, dial, like, you know, it's very textured. The thing that, you know, that's 73 years old and it works better than, you know, quite a lot of like this modern stuff. Uh, I cannot, you know, I cannot fault that. Uh, I did have two of these. I gave one to my daughter's boyfriend. Um, but I've kept this one. So I quite like a bit of Adidas sports watches. Because um, I'm a scooter boy, sort of skinheady lad sort of person. Or, you know, I bought... Um, I've kept this one as well. It's a three working sub dial. Um, what's it? Day, day, and seconds, or day, day, and 24 hour. It's Ben Sherman. Like, you know, I love Ben Sherman stuff. And it's got working bezel, and, you know, it's got all this stuff. In good nick. You know, I like Ben Sherman. So if I'm going to go out to a scooter do, or like, you know, a mod night, or something like that, I'd wear this. Because this is, like, you know, absolutely, like, you know, Ben Sherman, his skinheads, mods, and all that. You know? And I was a skinhead. <laughs> Uh, we're coming down to the last rate. This one I've recently featured, I think. I got this for a few pounds. It comes on this beautiful expanding bracelet. Right. It's uh, called the Spirit Chronograph Company Limited. And um, it's actually quite nice. I mean, it's, it's got a silly little my uh, uh 20 something movement inside it's nothing special inside you know it is a genuine myota rather than a chinese clone it keeps very good time and it looks very retro and vintage and i love it that's why i've got it and that's why i kept it and then this is the last one last i think we're finally at number 51 or 52 um probably 51 so i've lost count actually right. this one i fixed up Got it in a bundle. Right. It's one of those like LED digital ones, but it's Storm. Um, Storm, like, you know, Storm is actually quite an expensive brand. Uh, you know, and these are selling for 40, 50 quid still on eBay. Right, you know, and like all the other ones, this is really heavy. It really is. Look how thick that, you know. Um, well, that's it. 50, oh, I think it's 51, 52. Right, somebody can count them up, Lloyd, and go along, Lloyd, you know, and let me know at the end of it. Right, let's go back up to them. So, there you go. That's my first 50 personal collection of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I actually have another what, 100 working watches. Right, there's all the ladies stuff, there's all the special stuff, I mean, you know, I haven't showcased the ladies um, seconda, the Russian secondas, the two from that, they are part of the collection, um, there's also the seconda divers watches for ladies, I haven't bothered with those, because I gave one of those away for, as a Christmas present, boxed it up, gave it a polish, new battery and everything, it was perfect, it was brand new, it was, um, so that's good. Uh, I'm trying to think what else do I, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got, so, I've got, I've got so many projects going. Like, you know, I still haven't done the Klaus Kobeck because I'm finding the uh, what you call it the uh, very very fine Ronda like fitting hands. I mean, they are very, very, very troublesome, and you know, I really thought I broke one of the hands. And it was like, you know, I just gently nudged it down with the old puller and everything, and push it on it, you know, and it wouldn't take. And then I realised that I'd left off a little arm, and I realised I'd left off a little ring, and it was like, I could take it all off again. And so I just put it over there, sort of thing, to say. Current projects it's working on, right? You know, uh, I've made some gains with my time graph. That's that's going to be what the watch will sit on. Uh, let's find something that I can sit on it. Here. Uh, 
Right. If, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Or not, like. As you can see, there's a cut out there, just there. Right. And uh, this is to enable like a watch to just sit nicely in there. Okay. And uh, where is he? Give me a second. I should have planned all this out. But I didn't. Uh, I just got to find the bloody thing, and uh, it's not there. I thought I had it all planned out. I'll stop it, you. Uh, the thing just keeps falling off. I was originally going to go with that microphone. Well, as you can see, with that jack. Uh, that is going to make a very nice um, bit. Right, yes, there we are. This here is a piezo contact microphone. Which just fits nicely in there. Right. Watch on top. Lovely jubbly. You know it makes sense. Right, you know, and then we'll be able to then you connect that if you look. I've um, soldered on a very high quality mono plug which will then go into this beastie this here is a karaoke mono pre amplifier for a microphone and um, you plug um, into that one with the mic I can have two or three light running. I, uh, you know, that one is for uh, that's for extra power going in. That is what will go to the computer or to the tablet or something. I will put that onto a USB at some point, and it takes 12 volts AC, which means all I've got to do is just plug 12 volt into it because it'll rectify it itself. Right, that's what all that is there. That's like a bridge red um, rectifiers. So, you know, and this will be my time graph. And the whole point of that is it's like a stethoscope for watches, but a computer, like, you know, a device listens to it and um, picks it all up. And I right, show you, you know, I mean, you know, like taking no prisoners, like that there is a USB sound card. So that would do all the processing of that and then hand over to the watch listening app a pure perfect amplifier signal. Uh, you know, all that palaver because I didn't want to pay 120 quid for a lot, you know, for a, a, a time grapher, which is a device that listens to watches. Um, I, it does it like you know, you can then like listen to it and it'll give you a set of values. And then if it's like running slow, running fast, there's something wrong with the, the set, the balance. I mean, you know, it's it does it all, like right, you know. And then you can like diagnose your watch problems with just that. I mean, it's not gonna like it's not a cure all for all evils or anything like that. But you know, sorry, um, it is like you know, it is a, just a tool. It's a very very useful tool. So, I'm going to leave that with you. You've seen my 50 plus, first 50 plus personal collection. I, um, I thought I'd share this with you. Like I've explained about Seconda, explained about, you know, all the, all the, I know why I like the Russian stuff and that, you know. I, end of the day, like, you know, the Russians are just people like we are. I, and, um, it's good and bad in everything. It's good and bad in America. It's good and bad in Britain. Like, you know, I mean, there are some complete and utter idiots out there in Britain. I'm probably one of them, but you know, we'll say no more about that. Um, and it's just like you know, it's it's a hobby that I've actually quite taken to. I'm quite enjoying it. You know, finding out all the different things that what these things do, and that, you know, seem to be drooping a bit to the side there. And, you know. I know what it is because they're so awesome to wear my like navy blue and fluorescent green Lonsdale sweatshirt. Like, you know. 
Mm, there's a story beyond that as well, because once upon a time, kind of, you know, I did actually, I was an amateur boxer. And um, I used to box at two places, Bellingham Boys Club and Marvel's Lane Boys Club. Um, I wasn't allowed to carry it on because my temper got away with me. But I used to meet Henry Cooper, uh, what's it? I used to meet um, Frank Bruno. Uh, it's been quite a few of the names. Like, uh, it was like, it was, you know, um, but the trouble is, like, you know, it was cracking one right around the chop sort of thing. I oh, just, <laughs> well, you know, and I'm just beating the geese to the ground. You know, you know it's like, no. So, I was told, thank you, but can you go away, please? Like, you know, you know, it's the same when I went and started doing martial arts, like judo and stuff like that. And, you know, it was all right up until somebody caught me around the chops and bosh. Like, you know, I, I, I would lose control, and the next thing is, is like the police are being called and I'm being let off in handcuffs, like, you know, because I. Like, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's only probably the Irish in me, like, you know, it just sends me absolutely sky eye, like, it only gets me around the face, like, you know, it, it's the quickest way to get me going. Anyway, we'll talk about that in another time, like, you know, and my, my boxing record was very poor because I just kept get, getting disqualified, like, you know, my granddad, he never lost a fight and he was a professional, like, you know, so... He's in the blood. The trouble is, he had a good te- he had good temper management. I had none. Right, I'll catch you next one. Toodle pip.